We're not even close, but the 2020 presidential elections are already shite with the Democrats talking about absolutely insane issues and even signaling that they're going to lose in this upcoming election. And that's why in this video, Jason, we're going to be talking about what they're talking about, and that is third trimester babies, white privilege, yang gang, $1,000 a month, uh, reparations, circumcisions, and uh, let's just start off with uh, some of the, the, the kind of most saddest and pathetic story with uh, New York City Mayor de Blasio, who last week was hinting that he wanted to <laughs> potentially run uh, for 2020 uh, on, on the Democratic Party as a candidate. And then everyone pretty much laughed at him. <laughs> They're like, well, what do you, you, you think? You're, no, 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 no. There, there's no way. He still didn't take that clue of everyone saying, uh, no, de Blasio, we don't want you running to be president of the United States. Uh, and he still didn't take that clue. Went up to New Hampshire to test things out, and things uh, came off pretty, pretty horribly. As the New York Post reports that de, ba de Blasio spoke to a crowd of only 20 people in New Hampshire. Again, testing the waters. And most importantly here, those 20 people actually included... 14 people on the panel <laughs> with just six people listening to him. And again, I, I it, it, this is funny and, and also kind of a laugh or cry way because of the just absolute damage that Mayor de Blasio has caused to New York City. I mean, this latest article talks about how he spent $300 million to create, uh, what was it, 3,000 jobs. Again, just a total social, social justice warrior, absolutely insane human being who somehow won the mayoral election. But Jason, the craziness doesn't just end with people trying to run. It's also the people running, like Elizabeth Warren, who just did a CNN town hall yesterday, and she talked about this issue. You want to play the clip or introduce it, Jason? You got it. I mean, I mean, come on. That's all I can say about all of this. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I am an African American female with no, really? African American female with five oh. beautiful adult children and ten grandchildren. Oh, Georgia, count your blessings every day. Georgia, count your <laughs> blessings every please, day. Please, please. Please. Ask to She's me. like a woman and what a person a public, of color. Well, I'm gonna have to kiss on this one. She, look how eager she is. Ah, <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep For waiting. Four hundred years of free labor. Yeah. In the South, especially Mississippi, will look like in the African American community in the new election. All right. Thank you, Georgia. In the new administration. Thank you. A new election? New administration? Okay. Well, I don't, Let's I, well, get all right. New administration. I mean, <laughs> she hasn't even got the nomination. There hasn't been a debate. Uh, Trump's looking pretty strong when you have such weak ass candidates, but let's keep going. So America was founded on principles of liberty and freedom and on the backs of slave labor. This is a stain on America. And we're not going to fix that. We're not going to change that until we address it head on directly. Let me just stop it there. Thought we addressed it head on directly with the civil rights movement and the fact that it's no longer separate but equal. There is no segregation and we've almost overcompensated for it with social programs like affirmative action. But hey, Maybe I'm a jackass and I don't know what I'm talking about. Apparently, we need to do more, Luke. Well, it's not just that issue. I mean, if we're going to talk about reparations for people who built this country, we're going to have to talk about the Chinese that built the railroads in absolute horrible conditions, which people, again, uh, took to uh, very close to slavery. But what about the Japanese that were interned? What about, of course, uh, the Irish and indentured servant, the Eastern Europeans? Every class that kind of comes in uh, was treated horribly. And, you know, Elizabeth Warren here, she didn't go full blown crazy, but she's talking about having a conversation about reparations to blacks. And I think if you're going to, you know, again, just try to talk and concentrate about that identity politics, you're going to isolate so many different people. Because if you look at government oppressing people, government oppressed a whole bunch of people all throughout history. And it's been all government systemically doing that. And again, just this whole race uh, issue, this, this whole concentration of identity politics, again, doesn't really do anything to benefit anyone. Uh, and to me, 
he just shows the absolute lunacy, which even gets crazier with the front runner now, Beto O'Rourke, who literally raised, what was it, $6.1 million, outbeat Bernie Sanders, outbeat all the Democratic candidates, even though he's catching himself in hot water time and time again. And this time, he just said something recently that uh, has been shocking a lot of people. You want to intro or play that clip, Jason? Yeah, you know, I chose this headline from Breitbart. I know a lot of people want to crap on them, but it gets it correct. It should be the decision the woman makes. This is a third trimester abortion. This is somebody who is between six and nine months, Luke. Six and nine months in the womb where you're going to, you know, going to have to have a serious, serious medical procedure just to have this done. So we're going to go here. We're going to play the whole clip. And uh, you watch what. The next president of the United States, Beto O'Rourke, has to say. Next president of the United States, my ass. Are you for third trimester abortions, or are you going to protect the lives of third trimester babies? Because, you know, there's really not a medical necessity for abortion. It's not a medical emergency procedure, because typically third trimester abortions take up to three days to have. So you would, in that sense, if there was an, an emergency, the doctors would just do a C-section and you don't have to kill the baby in that essence. So are you for or against third trimester abortions? So the, the question is about abortion and reproductive rights. And, and my answer to you is that that should be a decision that the woman makes uh, about her own body. Um, I trust her. Uh, that well, we dodged it. Dodged the whole question. I mean, this is what politicians do, especially around this time, because, again, that was a very detailed, that was a very specific question. And many people are holding him accountable for that uh, because, again, uh, it just doesn't cut it. The question was very detailed, uh, rather would have a C-section or a third trimester uh, abortion. And, again, he flatly came out and said specifically on abortion. The women gets to decide. Uh, and, and that's, you know, again, similar comments from the Virginia governor has caused a lot of controversy, has caused a lot of people to look into him and caused even a bigger political circus there. But uh, to me, it's kind of, uh, again, what politicians do. But uh, do you think it's correct to hold them accountable for those words, Jason? Look, I think it's pretty goddamn obvious if you can surgically remove a baby from the mother's womb and it's a baby and can live outside of the mother's womb we are not talking about abortion anymore we're not talking about where does life start when i was in school that was the big argument when does life really start is it when the sperm meets the egg is it at one week two week where in the gestation period should we be concerned the bait i was born at seven months luke Se barely seven months, like the first week of seven months. We're talking, if if we live in another era, it could go on two more months. They'd be like, you know what, Scout? Don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> Let's just get rid of them. Yeah, that's literally what some people are saying, and that's absolutely terrifying. Uh, let's move on to the last story before we get into them kind of signaling this kind of loss here. And that, of course, is Andrew Yang, who bravely came out against a circumcision. He's, of course, the candidate that is known for just predominantly going out there and saying that he's going to give you a stipend for $1,000 a month. That's pretty much his major campaign. And he's doing, this is the absolute lunacy of it, he's doing a lot better than a lot of the other candidates just on that one principle that everyone keeps talking about him. Jason, what are your thoughts about that and uh, uh, the circumcision part? Well, obviously, the circumcision story is a non-story to me. I'm uncut and uncensored folks so God, it's too it's, much information Jason. it's God, it's, it's it. not even a, it's, it's not a question if i ever have um the illegitimate son or a family of my dreams which i hope to one day have why would i want to um, mutilate his genitals with surgery i think it's absurd that that's like a cultural thing and we've convinced ourselves it's some kind of a necessary medical procedure it's not um human beings did just fine before we cut the tips of their dicks off anyway <laughs> that being Family said, friendly show, Jason. No one wants to hear about your junk. Hey, that being said, his universal basic income idea is absolute insanity. Insanity. And we actually did a backup video of all the different versions that we've heard of now of universal basic income, whether that be a thousand dollars a month, which seems to be Yang's plan, or an upfront balloon payment of ten thousand dollars per year. 
It's all lunacy to me. You can't just create something out of nothing and expect better results. What you're going to have is less benefits for people that need it. You're going to have the same kind of irresponsible behavior with those finances that you've given these people that did not work for it. But hey, I'm I'm insane for saying those things. I'm a I'm a right wing activist. I must be crazy Trump supporter. Get on the train, Luke. Choo choo. And again, we're not Trump supporters. We don't support the left or the right, but it's important to call out the lunacy, the asinine destruction of our civil discourse. But to me, there's a bigger signal here because we're seeing things that Elizabeth Warren and Nancy Pelosi are calling for to try to guarantee their win in 2020. We see Elizabeth Warren calling to abolish the Electoral College. We're seeing Nancy Pelosi trying to lower the voting age to 16. All, of course, will be very favorable policies towards the Democratic Party uh, and again promote this kind of mass rule. And a lot of people are having a very interesting response to the 16 year old uh, kind of recommendation to be able to vote. Uh, what's your take on it, Jason? And to me, again, just the last kind of thing I wanted to reiterate here these are things that are showing that the Democrats are in trouble, which I believe they are. Uh, Trump's poll numbers are. are actually a lot better than they were before. And to me, they need these things if they're going to pull off a victory in 2020 with just how separated, how crazy, and how lunatic the party is. Jason? Well, they already know that their numbers are stronger with the 18 to 24 crowd. And unfortunately, that's due to the public education system and the college system that is purely indoctrination in most instances at this point. And I'm kind of disgusted that Pelosi would even suggest this. Look, we already take 18-year-old kids and allow them to join the military and get shot at and shoot others of a different color in a different country. Those people still cannot legally drink for three more years. That's not low enough? 18 isn't low enough? And then you look at the electoral college idea, Luke. And look, you live in the big city. You, again, know that herd mentality and that your city leans very, very left. And if you go on to the other coast, into L.A. and all these other places, they also lean very, very left. Guess what? They got a lot of people. They got a whole lot of people. So what ends up happening, even with the size of Texas and the rest of the country, is that basically New York and California are going to decide your policy and your president if we get rid of things like the Electoral College, where you have it state by state and broken up. And that's why the Electoral College is actually important. By no yeah. means yeah. is it a yeah. perfect I, I, system. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, Jason. We, you don't want the rest of the country to be like LA and New York City. Trust me. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you don't. And people don't understand that nuance. It's, Luke, like we've seen in the past, it's far from a perfect system, especially the delegate system in the primaries where we saw Bernie beaten, raped, and robbed and then smile about and say, you know what? Hill Dog 2016, I'm here for you, Hill Dog. Woohoo! Yeah, and I think up. that's why and I think that's why Bernie is not trending as much as he is because again he pretty much gave up the pooch. He he was winning. He got screwed over. There was documents, there was an email saying, "Hey, we screwed you over. There's a whole bunch of nepotism. We're going to hire the people who screwed you over." And Bernie Sanders bent over, took it and said, "Yes, yes, I will support Hillary Clinton." Why? Why? Absolute lunacy. And this is why uh you know, not having a backbone talk about these topics. This is why we think the Democratic Party will be losing in 2020. 20. That's our personal take on it. Jason, do you have anything else to say? Or do you want to end it? No, that's a wrap, my friends. I just want to let everybody know that we are doing four videos a day, seven days a week. We got seven on the main, and that means 21 videos a week on the backup. Folks, we are busting our butts. Please hit that like, share, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications, and most importantly, folks, be the change you want to see in the world.